I'll be going into chapter 6 of uh, thermodynamics, which is uh, the second law of thermodynamics. This is from uh, the textbook, page 276. The objective of this uh, topic would be all this, int introduce the second law of thermodynamics to identify valid processes as those that satisfy both uh, first and second law of thermodynamics and so on uh, below here. Yeah. So in this first lesson, I'll be covering 6.1 to 6.3, which means uh, right up to describe the Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah. Okay, as for 6.1, <clears throat> what is the second law of thermodynamics? So second law of thermodynamics says that um, energy can go in a certain direction. And unlike the first law, the first law says that energy is conserved, energy before, energy after is same, it's conserved. But the second law defines on the quality of energy itself. As an example, look at this cup here. You look at, look at this cup here. If it's hot coffee that's left in a cold aircon room, you will see that the heat is being transferred out uh, from the hot coffee to the cold environment, right? It doesn't work that the other way around unless uh, you, you use external uh, electricity or something like that. You know? So this shows that the second law has a uh, second law of thermodynamics which shows that direct energy has certain uh, specific direction. Likewise, look at this um, uh, wire. Okay? If you connect them to battery, what happens to the wire? The wire actually produces heat. But then, if let's say we disconnect the batteries and we introduce heat to the wire, will it generate electricity? Of course not, right? So that's what I'm trying to say that uh, the second uh, law of thermodynamics just says that energy goes in certain way. So it says that it goes in one way, process occurs in a certain direction and not in the reverse direction. A process must satisfy both the first and the second law of thermodynamics to proceed. Yeah. So first law always talks about the quantity and the second law talks about the quality yeah major issues of the second law first the second law may be used to identify the direction of processes and the second law may also assess energy has quality as well as quantity the first law is concerned with the quantity of energy and the transformation of energy from one form to the other with no regards of its quality Whereas the second law provides the necessary means to determine the quality as well as the degree of degradation of energy during the process. So the second law of thermodynamics is also used to determine the theoretical limits. Yeah? Theoretical limits of an engineering process. Yeah? So now, let me just introduce to you some terms. We are moving on to chapter 6.2, thermal energy reservoirs. So what is a reservoir? A hypothetical body with a relative large amount of energy capacity that can supply or absorb finite amount of heat without, yeah, I repeat, without undergoing any change in t temperature is known as the thermal energy reservoir. Okay, example, like the ocean. If you pour a, a kettle of hot water into the ocean, will it affect the ocean's um, uh, amount of heat? Of course, no. The temperature is not going to rise. Likewise, your uh, atmosphere, yeah, like houses, they pro uh, all of them on the aircon in winter. I mean, sorry, they on heater during the winter. What happens? Does the winter get uh, warmer? No, right? So that's why the ambient temperature, the ambient air is also a reservoir, huge reservoir. So reservoir can be large bodies such as ocean, lake, rivers, your atmosphere, yeah, all these are reservoir. Yeah, same goes to the sink. Sink also is a, a place where the thermal energy is, is transmitted to. Yeah. Okay, before that, source. Source would be the place where the heat is being started. Yeah. And sink will be the place where the heat is, heat is being released. Okay. Now, let's move on to example 6.3. Yeah, 6.3. It's on heat engine. So, textbook page 278. Yeah. Okay. So, what is a heat engine? It converts heat to work. So, from a temperature, like a, a high temperature source, 
yeah you have q in to the heat engine and it produces work and the balance heat is being released to the sink okay so heat engine what is it the they receive heat from high temperature example solar energy oil furnace nuclear reactor they convert the part of the heat to work usually using a rotating shaft yeah which is connected to a turbine and then they also reject remaining waste to the uh, low temperature sink example to the atmosphere to the river and all and they are uh, uh, they operate on a cycle what does it mean by cycle from the initial go back go through processes and come back to the initial and repeats itself yeah many many cycles continuously heat engine and other cyclic devices usually involve fluid so they have working fluid it can be anything yeah as a working fluid it can be flu uh, can be gas can be liquid can be uh, anything yeah now as an example let's look at a steam power plant okay so you remember the diagram earlier so we have the source and we have the sink right so what's happening in the middle here okay let's look at that okay the middle part like in a steam power plant is made of boiler made of turbine made of condenser and made of pump so we have energy source actually you know it's not like the q is coming out from outside it's actually within yeah it's produced by the boiler itself but for simplification purposes in the textbook we we show like as if it's coming from outside and then it's going to outside actually in real case pr process it's actually happening within the process like, where is it from it's from the boy uh, furnace and then it's supplied to the boiler where the condenser released to where it releases from the condenser to the atmosphere so it's actually one whole system the, the power plant itself but for for drawing sake to make our life easy so we we draw it this way we have a source we have sink and then we have heat engine in the middle okay so what do we have here q in amount of heat supplied to the steam in the boiler from high temperature example the furnace q out heat rejected to the from the steam in condenser to the low temperature sink yeah, example to the river or to the atmosphere from the condenser work out amount of work delivered by the steam to expand the uh, um, as it expands in the turbine whereas work in amount of work requires to compress the water to boiler pressure like uh, using the pump right how do you run the pump you need electricity to run the pump yeah so this is how uh, it, it forms a cycle yeah so in real life actually this is how it goes the the yeah, it goes in one way, work out and then work net out and a portion of the work is actually being recycled back to the heat engine. But um, for our calculation sake, we always keep to this kind of drawing. Yeah? This kind of uh, simple drawing to just make our ourselves understand better. Okay? Okay, thermal efficiencies. So what is thermal efficiency? I'm at uh, textbook page 279. Yeah? So thermal efficiency is given by uh, network output, network output over input. It's always output over input. So efficiency is always the same. Yeah? It's always output over input. So formula wise, it is work net out divided by work uh, Q in. So what is work net out? It is one uh, Q in minus Q out. So simplify it becomes formula like this yeah because this is q in over q in minus q out over q in okay so because um sorry uh q in minus q out uh, this is the work net right so q in minus q in so this becomes actually one so this is one minus q out over q in so what's work net out qh minus ql yeah like the uh, qh will be uh, the one from the high temperature and then ql to the sink usually the one to the sink so this is a schematic diagram of a heat engine example so from the furnace supply 100 but what's the net work out is 55 so how much is lot uh, literally wasted is 45 yeah 100 minus 55 to 45 so can we save q out okay we say that i so much of uh, thing wasted right 45 you know wasted can we just save it yeah try to like uh, make it zero can we do that yeah i'm going to talk about that shortly mm, one second 
Okay. In a steam power plant, the condenser is a device where large quantities of waste heat is rejected to the river, lake and uh, atmosphere. Can we not just take the condenser out? Can we just remove the condenser because it's wasting a lot of energy? Yeah, the answer is definitely no. Yeah, we cannot do that because if we remove the condenser from the process, then the the heat engine it, it won't become a heat engine. Yeah, uh, it will never work. So we need the condenser no matter, uh, even though it is actually wasting energy to the sink. Yeah, so every heat engine must waste some energy by transferring it to low temperature reservoir. Yeah, but of course nowadays scientists they try to use back this energy to somewhere else yeah okay the last part of the uh, sub chapter of 6.3 is second law of thermodynamics on kelvin planck statement yeah i'm at uh, page 283 of the textbook itself so what does kelvin planck say it is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and produce a network uh, uh, a net amount of work it means you make everything from 100 to 100 impossible yeah so no heat engine can have thermal efficiency of 100 percent no way so if any scientist claims that they can produce something with 100 percent efficiency which means it is actually not true yeah this is violating Calvin Planck's statement okay let me just share with you one of the calculation okay Let's look at this working. This working is actually extracted out from your textbook itself. Yeah. Okay. Let's read this question together. I'm going to enlarge this. Um, heat is transferred to a heat engine from a furnace at the rate of 80. If the rate of waste rejection, waste rejection is 50. Okay. Determine the network output and the thermal efficiency of the heat engine. So this question is actually coming from your textbook, which is from page uh, 282, yeah. So what happens here is that you have the finance, right? The finance. And then you have uh, the uh, heat exchanger right in the middle here, heat engine. Yeah, heat engine. And then we have something like this, which is to the river. Like in this case, it's actually rejecting to the river, the sink river. So from, uh, from here, we have 80. And from here we have 50 okay do you understand the diagram so you need to do this catching yeah when you are solving this question so QH in this case is 80 and QL in this case is 50 so what is the network output QH minus QL which is 30 uh, megawatt okay so what is the efficiency 30 divided by 80 so the efficiency would be 37.5 yeah 37.5 so the heat engine converts 37.5 percent of the heat which it receives to work okay so waste uh, the other 50 is actually wasted to the river okay okay so with this i've actually ended uh chapter 6.1 right up to 6.3 so what you need to do is you need to solve the questions that uh, i will be uploading um on the link itself yeah Okay. Thank you.